So number one thing to talk about here. I spoke about it a little bit on my uh, podcast called Taz, the Excellence English Show. You can find it on my channel and on all places where you listen to podcasts. But look at this news. Sean Combs, P. Diddy, um, is accused of the rape and abuse in a new lawsuit, right? But the update on this, the update is the one that we want, which I didn't get on here. The update is this. That Diddy has settled with Cassie. The day after that news came out, where I reported on the live stream, Diddy actually settled, bro. He actually settled. Look at that. In record time. Have you actually seen someone settle a civil suit like that with those kind of racy allegations like sexual abuse, harassment, rape, and all that stuff, physical shit? Have you ever seen someone settle so quickly? Especially someone prominent as fucking Diddy. Absolutely crazy, right? He settled in fucking record, 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 record time. So let's read the article here. Sean Combs, the singer, and Cassie have reached a settlement just one day after she filed an explosive lawsuit accusing hip hop mogul of rape, numerous instances of faith physical abuse. The parties announced on Friday evening that they had reached an agreement to resolve the case, though they disclosed no details about the terms of the settlement. I decided to resolve the matter amicably on terms that I have some control in. Cassie says, I want to thank my family and fans and lawyers for their unwavering support. In a statement, Mr. Combs said, we have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. For Mr. Combs, Combs, the settlement quickly shuts down what would have been a risky, potentially embarrassing process of legal discovery in which reams of evidence are made public and a possible trial. And for Cassie, who was already aired out ad accusations through public complaint, avoids a cross-examination cross by Mr. Combs' attorneys. Now, for me personally, talking from an outsider's point of view, I personally think a settlement out of court for the accusations that Didi has been leveled against him is proof that he probably did it. Most likely, he probably did the things that he was accused of with the rape and the abuse. You probably, you know, it 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 goes it tends to skew that way when you're settling out of court. Because I think, as a man in this current society we're living in at the moment, if you get accused of something like this and it's false, and you know it's false, you have to do everything in your power, even if it bankrupts you. Even if it makes you lose your family, lose your partner, whatever happens, lose your jobs, you have a moral and you have a you you just have to clear your name if you are innocent. But if you're guilty, it's probably for the better that you knock that on the head quickly. If you did do what they said you did, it's probably for the best that you quickly wrap it up, because the problem with this with a Diddy thing, because again, it's a civil case, like I mentioned previously, most likely with a civil case, the whole point of, you know, suing somebody in this lawsuit, because um, I think the total amount she wanted in the original lawsuit was like 30 million. So you're clearly going for the money and the reputational damage anyway. So she got what she wanted, right? She killed two birds with one stone. You got the money and you got the reputational damage and quote unquote revenge on your accuser because now they've been publicly shamed. They've been exposed online. Everyone knows what hamster monster they are. Bloody blah, blah, blah. But I think the if you're Diddy, this is a smart play because what's happened since those allegations come out is that you've had various people who are surrounding Diddy who've now been exposed, whether it's Joe Budden's inability to call it out and people are kind of questioning his and his motives and incentives, whether it's, um, who else I was talking about? Whether it's other rappers and personalities maybe, you know, uh, validating what Cassie said or arguing, you know, arguing in fucking Diddy's defense and exposing themselves. Many people have come out of the woodwork and said little things, little murmurs and little things have been put out there, right? I even heard one person say there's a suggestion out there that allegedly Cassie met her husband, who she's with at the moment, through those free coughs. Some people are suggesting that her husband now, who used to be a model, was one of those escorts that Diddy used to hire to bang her and stuff while she was under the influence and he was dragging off in the corner. That's what some people are suggesting. So loads of things came out. So I think it's probably for the for the best, especially for Cassie, that she gets knocked on the head, she gets her money, Diddy's reputation gets completely damaged and she could go back to living her life as her family. It's actually for the best this overall situation happens. But the funny thing is that the hip-hop media silence and their inability to talk about this openly is very, very telling. And it just goes to show 
that my common thing that I always say that the worst thing in this society we're in, where we're surrounded by monsters, whether it's kiddie diddlers, whether it's rapers, whether it's murderers and stuff, isn't the actual monsters because they're always going to exist. They're always going to be a fundamental part of society in the same way, you know, fucking Adam and Eve was together and stuff and, you know, got tempted by the snake and all that malarkey, right? It's going to be, it's a founding principle, you know, it's like, what you call it? Um, Cain and Abel story all those things we're going to have evil people they're always going to exist the point of us being regular decent humans is that we have to call out that shit if you can't call it out if you can't bring those people to, to an account if you can't expose them then we might as well not live in a civil society but if we want to live in a civil society if we want to live in a world where we are looking after each other we have to look after each other by calling out the monsters and the fact that people are turning a blind eye and burying their head in the sand when it comes to Diddy, because of his power, reputation, clout, and whatever it may be, is disgusting. Because it shows you that if you have enough clout, enough power, enough influence, you can legitimately get away with murder. It makes me always think, that thing that Trump said, where he said, oh, I could go in the middle of Times Square, shoot somebody, and my supporters will always support me. I know it was a flippant thing for him to say, but with a lot of things that Trump says, he was actually right. When you're a level of fame, and he even said that about the woman, right? About the about the fucking grab her by the pussy. If you read the entire quote of that clip, the entire context, he says something along the lines of, when you're famous, you can get away with anything. She'll let you grab her by the pussy. And he's actually right. Because figuratively, that's actually what happens in society. Metaphys you know, like that's what actually happens. People actually get away with murder because of their name because of their position in life, because of their status, because of their money, because of their bank account, because of their connections. And it's fucking diabolical. And the really reason why it's diabolical is because it's the victims that suffer the most. When you don't call shit out, you have a bunch of victims coming behind them that are going to suffer from it. You have families that get torn apart. Like everybody suffers because you don't call out shit. It has a legit quote unquote butterfly effect when you don't call out evil or when you don't point out when people when they're doing such shit. And me personally, I would have thought, fair enough, you're a bit intimidated because Diddy's a big name in the scene, big name in the industry. He's got a reputation. He's got power. He's got this. Fair enough. But I would assume or I would have hoped there would be a line or there would be a thing that you just won't let people get away with, no matter who they are. And I would have thought kitty diddling and rape would be quite high on your list. That's why I remember when that whole Balenciaga thing happened with the whole like BDSM thing, right? It wasn't that the whole thing was a bit overblown. Big up um, KP, appreciate you for the super chat. What else you got? <laughs> Big up KP. <laughs> what else you got? Big up. It wasn't that. Um, oh yeah, because you were here before, and that's why. Uh, Big up KP. I appreciate you for the super chat, bro. Let's quickly get through this now. Move on. But it wasn't that. Um, it wasn't. Thank you for the super chat, bro. I appreciate you. It wasn't that. Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, the KP da, 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 did he did this? He did that? He went off. Um, the fucking people that going silent. Yeah. So if you're silent about that, I think you're almost you know, you're almost an accomplice, right? You're almost helping, aiding and abetting the awful and disgusting behavior. So I wanted to quickly go over the actual allegations that were levied against him because I don't think we actually went through it, right? Just quickly go through it in this fucking um, court documents, right? So these are the actual court documents that were fucking submitted. So let's actually read through it because I think these are really crazy. When you actually read through them and the detail that's included, you can understand why Diddy said, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. So let's see. The... The the plaintiff is uh what you call it? The plaintiff is Cassandra Ventura, which is obviously Cassie, and uh defendants are Sean Combs, Bad Boy Entertainment, and Epic Records, Comb Enterprise, also C and Doe Corps. So it says here. Um Cassie hereby alleges that for her complying against defendant Sean Combs, uh Epic Records together as followers the defendant sean combs is a rapper and a record executive popularly known by stage name puff daddy diddy or diddy he rose to prominence in the music and entertainment industry in 2022 combs received a lifetime achievement award from bet the truth however is that cassie um was held down by mr combs endured over a decade of violent behavior and disturbed demands for miss ventura the dark times were those that she spent trapped by mr combs in a cycle of abuse violence and sex trafficking let's get that out there too right you'd think the line should be sex trafficking also. I know that's what I'm about to say. So with the Kim Kardashian thing, the thing that was really 
illuminating about that stuff. It showed that there are some people out there that have no moral compass. They have no principle. There is no like line in the sand that if somebody passes that, then you're kind of dead to me and you have to move on. So the BDSM Balenciaga bear things involved children and there were some documents on the table that people are getting crazy about. You would have thought with Kim being a mother, a mother, that she'd have a line in the sand, but not really. They kind of turned a blind eye to it, pretended it didn't really exist and made some excuse and made some fluffy. So I think this is the one of the main things that's kind of disturbing about this is like, you'd think rape would be one that you would kind of draw a line under and say, hey, I don't care who you are. Even if you're a friend, if you rape somebody, you're kind of dead. But who do I know? Let's continue. So, um, Combs and Jordan, Ms. Com Mr. Combs, cycle of abuse and violence, among other violent, unlawful acts, Mr. Combs did the following. Raped Cassie in her own home after she tried to leave him raped often punched beat kicked and stomped on cassie resulting in bruises burst lips black eyes and bleeding and i mentioned before if you were around when cassie blew up in terms of a hip-hop r&b type of field you would have known if you were paying attention she often had the tendency to disappear I don't know if you were paying in mind, there was always a time when Cassie would not be around anymore. She would all over social media, she'll have a video out, there'll be some cute picture of her, and then she'll disappear. And I was just wondering, why is she disappearing for? Like, she's hot in the streets, why is she... Da -da -da? But now it's making sense. Most likely she was in a freak-off somewhere, or she was recovering from abuse, and Diddy didn't want to have her out in public with bruises and black eyes and shit. That's the actual truth. That's the actual sad part about it. Or she was running away or going through something. Because I just always wonder, why is Cassie disappearing randomly here and there? Now we know why. Or that's my theory anyway. Um, blew up a man's car after she learned, after he learned, sorry, that he was romantically interested in Cassie. And again, think about this, right? This isn't like Cassie cheating on Diddy with Kid Cudi, because that's the person it was. It's... Kid Cudi having a crush on Cassie. Maybe they hung out. Maybe they felt it doesn't matter. But it wasn't like she went behind his back. And Diddy still had his car blown up. Crazy. Forced Miss Cassie to engage in sex acts with male workers while masturbating and filming the encounters. Ran out of his apartment with a firearm in pursuit of a rival industry executive whom learned it was nearby. Allegedly, they're suggesting that this story is a story that is funny because. This whole entire time in hip hop history, we always assumed that Diddy was scared of Suge Knight, but it's actually transpired now that most likely Suge Knight was the one that was scared of Diddy, because obviously he got his man killed in terms of Tupac, and he was actually running around the streets looking for him actively to the point where he, you know, ran out of the house one day with a gun himself to go and get him when he heard he had a drop on him or something. Imagine that at his peak, at his pomp, being the businessman, the mogul, Diddy's out here pulling at the strap, running after people. Um, demanded that Cassie to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is. This is the same thing he tried to pull with J-Lo, innit? Now we know why J-Lo didn't want anything to do with him. J he tried to pull this stunt with J-Lo and she was like, I'm out. Fuck niggas. And she hasn't dated a black guy since, I don't think, has she? <laughs> She's like, fuck these niggas. Um, introduced Cassie to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol, substance abuse, and required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addiction. Am I the only person who just assumed Diddy was a massive cokehead or something? I'm surprised to find out he was more so on the prescriptions, pills, and Molly. It goes to show that in America, you have a very complex relationship with prescription pills because I always just assumed because he was a party boy, he most likely just did coke and MD, but I guess over there you can get some pretty gnarly prescription drugs that probably do the same thing or probably aren't as hardcore as coke and stuff because that might just take you out but a prescription drug could have you nice buzz while you're into some freak shit but you can also conduct business maybe that's the case um and obviously the the saddest part about it was that cassie's first introduction into the scene was meeting diddy you know that's a sad thing you know that's the fucking sad thing um what are you saying in the chat to me? Diddy is actively searching for men. The abuse is atrocious regards. Exactly. He violated Lil Bow Wow. He doesn't hide it. 
Um, it's just called out. It's scary for him. Everybody in the closet. Meth smoker. Party drug. Yeah, meth. I've discovered. Big up Jared Merrick. I've discovered throughout the clip I put out, the comments I got on that clip about meth in fucking crystal meth in nightclubs. I didn't know it was that prevalent. The people in the, in the comments were schooling me, boy. I had no idea that crystal meth was that popular in nightclubs. But it makes sense though, because I remember back in the day we used to do a thing called meow meow, which is basically methadone. It's, it smelled like fucking cat piss. That was like our first kind of party drug when we were like all like I don't know, eighteen, seventeen ish, whatever. It was fucking horrendous, but that was the thing everyone used to used to kind of do. I think you should get it from like India or something. I forgot how they got it. Um, but yeah, boom, boom, boom. That's the article. So yeah, I'm happy for fucking Cassie for getting it fucking settled. Um, I'm not gonna read the entire thing because I think most of you are aware of what happened. Um, but yeah it's just disturbing man it's really really sad and the details of it are fucking horrible when you walk through the entire thing but i'm happy she settled hopefully she got her money and she can move on and live a somewhat whole life after the fact i guess not because you've gone through what you've gone through and now you know it's going to be with you forever but if you can get some monetary gain from it then fair play to her do you know what i mean fair fucking play to her fair fucking play to her um did you got bgl on the speed dial <laughs> exactly Ice is everywhere, Uche. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know this. I'm 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 naive, bro. I didn't know people were doing crystal meth in clubs. I just assumed everyone was doing the same thing I was doing at the time, which was fucking, you know, the cats and stuff and whatever it may be. But I guess everyone to be fair, I guess you can't really look down on people doing crystal meth if you're doing ketamine, innit? It's a bit weird, isn't it? I, I, I love how people I, I know a lot of people that do this. I've kind of done it sometimes myself. Like you have this weird like superiority because you do other things they do. So, Bro, like, Ket is probably as bad, if not worse, than fucking Crystal Meth. It's all the same thing, really. It's all, you know what I mean? It's all tweaker shit anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like, no one's better than each other because one person's doing that, one person's doing that. 